asking him to sit down for breakfast. Talk about awkward. And it gets even more awkward when Jesus speaks. Here's what he said in verse 15. When they'd finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I loved you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I tell you the truth, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you'll stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. And then he said to him, follow me. Three times Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? And three times Peter gets to say, yes, Lord. Three times for three denials. It's Jesus' way of showing Peter and the others that he is restored. That Jesus refuses to let Peter's denial destroy their relationship. It's Jesus' of Jesus' way of reconciling with Peter and giving him a fresh start. And it's funny that while Peter is the one who has hurt Jesus, he's also the one that gets upset. Jesus, why do you keep asking me, do you love me? You know I love you. Besides, you know everything. You don't have to ask. Even though Peter doesn't realize it at the moment, what Jesus is doing in giving him a chance to erase those denials. Jesus won't be stopped from reconciling their relationship. Three times for three denials. A chance to start again. You know, I sometimes think that that what Jesus did in reconciling with Peter was as much a miracle as rising from the dead. Jesus had every right never to speak to Peter again. His best friend, the head disciple, had turned away from him in his hour of need. He could have never spoken to him again or or at least never accepted him back as a friend and apostle. But instead, Jesus sought Peter out, and they started over again. Last week, I told you about a little incident with me and a rock in the neighbor's lamppost. And I don't know if this is confession month or what, But today I want to tell you about another incident that happened not long after that. I was a teenager at the time, and in our neighborhood, we played a lot of games at night. Starlight, Moonlight, Capture the Flag, Hide and Go Seek, those kinds of games. And every house on the block had children about the same age. And so we played across everybody's yard, from our house down to my best friend's house. Well, one night after we were finished playing, my best friend and I got into a fight. I don't remember who started it or what it was about. All I remember is that it was the first real intent to hurt one another fight I was ever in. My friend was bigger and stronger than I was. He was a wrestler. The punches flew. We grappled on the ground. It was really ugly. And then... I saw my opportunity. As he tried to put me into some wrestling death grip, his hair hung within reach of my hands. And I know this isn't fighting fair. I'm kind of ashamed of it. (laughs) But I grabbed his hair, and I twisted his head around and wrestled him into the ground by his hair. The more he struggled, the more I twisted his head into the ground. I tried to get him to give in, to cry uncle, to admit he was a loser, but he wouldn't do it. And so I continued to hurt him. And time went on. Me, afraid of letting go, I thought he would kill me. (laughs) 
and him refusing to give in in spite of the pain I caused him. Now this went on for at least a half hour. It seemed like an eternity. But then my mother stuck her head out of the door and yelled for me. As mothers did in those days, you may recall that. We both knew the fight was over. Because you might be in a grudge match to the death, but when mom called, you dropped what you were doing and got home. (laughs) Thought that'd be the end of our friendship. We'd been like brothers since we were five, but we'd both hurt each other pretty bad, physically and emotionally. And things were awkward in the months after that. And I wish I could say that, that I apologized and patched things up, but I didn't. It was he who simply refused to let that destroy our friendship. And he started doing things with me again. It was his determination for reconciliation that allowed us to start over. To this day, he's the only one from the old neighborhood that I keep in touch with. My middle son bears his name, and he's the only one besides my family that signs off on the phone by saying, I love you. Jesus said to the one who rejected him, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. You know I love you. Feed my lambs. Take care of my sheep. Follow me. Jesus restores Peter to friendship, and then he asks Peter to do the same to take care of each other in the church, and to bring back to God those who are separated, to once again fish for men and women, and to follow him. That morning, Jesus did it over a fish fry. We don't have a fish fry here today, but the same Lord is still alive. And that same Lord is giving us the opportunity to start over with God and to help others do the same. Feed my lambs, he tells us. Take care of my sheep. Follow me. Let's pray. Oh Lord, you do see everything that happens in our lives. You know our hearts. Nothing is hidden from you. And yet still, you ask us to say the words, Yes, Lord, we love you. Oh God, teach us once again how to fish for men and women, to be ambassadors of reconciliation, to bring them back to you. Thank you for never giving up on us. May we never give up on others. May we truly follow you. Amen.